Zoom meetings are everywhere. In fact, I was on two today just before making this video. We use them for meetings, for birthdays, for Toastmasters, for happy hours. We're using them for all different purposes. And Zoom makes it really easy for us. The first 40 minutes are free for groups of three or more. So more and more of us are using this technology. Unfortunately, not every Zoom host has the same level of experience. In this video, I'm going to share 15 ways to make your Zoom meetings better. So stay tuned. By the way, let me know in the comments which of these tips was most useful for you. It'll really help me in the future making new videos. And if you don't mind, I'd really appreciate a like or a share or even a subscribe with the bell next to it. You click the bell next to the subscribe and you'll hear about all my new videos as they come out. Security around Zoom has hit the headlines recently, but there are some simple steps you can take to make your Zoom meetings much more secure. I'm going to outline four settings that you should consider using when you set up that initial Zoom meeting. As the host, disable the join before host setting. This will ensure that no one arrives before you, especially nobody that maybe wasn't expected. Disable the file transfer setting. In chat, you can upload files. It's a good idea to turn this off. Now this one isn't for everyone, but I still would like to suggest it to you. Enable the waiting room setting. What this does is it requires you to approve anyone who's joining the meeting as they join. Now to do this successfully, the host has to be vigilant. You have to keep an eye out for those that are waiting to get into the meeting and add them in as they arrive. And I'll talk a little bit later about some ways to make this a little easier. And the last thing is, disable the allow remove participants to join. You may find yourself in a situation where you need to remove a participant for any reason. Maybe they just arrived at the wrong place. If you set it so that the removed participant can't join, you'll ensure that you don't have to deal with this again. So let's talk about some of the other things you need to consider before that Zoom meeting that you're about to host. First things first, you may end up sharing a screen on your desktop as the host. Make sure you turn off notifications and tidy up the desktop so it looks good when you're sharing it with others. As I said earlier, there is a free version and it's free for 40 minutes for groups of three or more. Now, some of you may only be doing sporadic meetings and maybe you're going to use this free version. Just know that if you're using the free version after 40 minutes, if your meeting expires and everyone gets kicked out, you can click the same link to rejoin that meeting. For the situations where it ends a little early and abruptly, just make sure everybody knows at the beginning of the meeting, you're using the free version of Zoom and at the 40 minute mark, they may have to reconnect. It's not an ideal situation, but as the host, you need to be aware of these things. And if you are using it on a regular basis, I would encourage you to get the paid version. This way you don't have to worry about the 40 minute limitation and you get a few other features. The way we communicate with one another internally within a Zoom meeting is through chat. As the host, first thing you wanna do when you're starting the meeting before anyone arrives is you wanna enable chat. Now the thing about chat is if you are looking at Zoom in a full screen, chat will float over the top and it will go wherever you want it. And for some of you, that might be great. However, there is another way to view chat that is a little cleaner. If you take it out of the full screen and just expand it to mostly full screen, but slightly smaller, the chat will be anchored to the right side of the screen. This will allow you to always look to one side to be able to see the chat messages coming in. And as the host, you really wanna monitor these things because oftentimes an individual wants to communicate something to you that either you need to bring up or maybe communicate something to you that you need to remedy before continuing the meeting. The next thing you wanna display are the participants. This is especially true if you have the option where somebody has to wait on you to join the meeting. What will happen is when somebody joins the meeting, if you have that setting under participants at the top, it will show that that contact, that individual is waiting. And then you just have to click to approve to let them in. Now, if you have trouble keeping up with this on the right, there is an option you can use. I personally don't use it, but you should be aware of it. 
You can enable a chime to play when anyone enters or exits the meeting. If you don't get distracted by something like that, then it's a good way for you to know that somebody is waiting on you. Again, I don't use that feature, but it is an option. Now, if you are having a Zoom for an organization or a business, please, please, please have an agenda. More than a face-to-face -face meeting, an agenda is critical to keep your meeting going along. Our attention spans are short, and a Zoom meeting cannot just meander or wander. Otherwise, people will get distracted. And when you're distracted on your computer, you're browsing, you're looking at the internet, you're checking your email, and frankly, the participants check out. So be organized. Make sure you have an agenda and a plan. Going along with having an agenda and a plan, it's good to assign roles. The host is the one who starts the meeting, but the host doesn't necessarily need to be the one to present the meeting. Where possible, it's a better idea to have one person that is the host and another person that's responsible for leading the meeting and keeping the agenda moving forward. The host is keeping up the more technical things, letting people into the meeting, muting, handling chats that are going back and forth, where the person leading the meeting is responsible for time management and agenda management. So when you can, have two people working together as a team to run the meeting, especially for an organization or a business where time is really important. Well, those are things to consider when setting up the meeting right before you get going. Now during the meeting as host, there are certain things that you should be doing and monitoring as it goes. One, I encourage people to use the gallery view. For a meeting like this where we're sharing each other's images and we want to see each other and how we're reacting, the gallery view is a great way to do that. It displays everybody's face on a grid and you can see all of them. The default is that it shows the person who's speaking, which gets a little annoying if people are making noise and are not muted even if they're not talking because then it changes between different people. The gallery view allows us to see everybody. Now there is one caveat. At the time of making this video, the iPad version gallery view only shows nine of the participants at any given time. It does rotate them and people will come in and out, but if you're working on a Zoom, especially if you're hosting a Zoom from an iPad, then you have the issue where you can't see everybody if you have more than nine people on the Zoom. I would suggest that if you have larger groups for your Zoom, use a Mac or use a PC for it. By the way, I want to point something out. This video is about how to host a Zoom. I already did a video on how to look great in Zoom, and I would encourage you to watch that video too. I put a link to it above. It will also be linked in the show notes, and at the very end of this video, you'll see a link to it as well. Watch that so it'll help you understand all the things you can do to be at your best on the Zoom whether you're a host or a participant. When you're hosting a Zoom, oftentimes, especially with larger groups, there's going to be somebody who has noise in the background that's really distracting. Maybe they're walking outside or getting into their car, or maybe they have a buzz or a hum going on or children playing in the background. As the host, please call that out. Suggest to them that they mute themselves or if they don't have the ability or don't know how to mute themselves, mute them for them. Go to the upper right hand corner of their image in Zoom. There's a blue box. Click on that box and mute them. They can always unmute themselves later. Now you should know that you can actually set the meeting up so that those that you mute cannot unmute themselves. You may want to consider whether this is important to you. If you set it up so that they cannot unmute themselves, there is a way where you can toggle this during the meeting. In the participants view, go to more. Make sure the item allow participants to unmute themselves is checked or unchecked depending on what you want to happen. This way you're managing the sound of the entire Zoom as a host and ensuring that you get the best possible results in your meeting. Now say you have an audio problem where there's noise and nobody knows where it is. Don't go through the effort of trying to incrementally solve the problem. You will start losing people and they'll start checking their email and browsing. Just do a mute all and then unmute the person who is designated to speak at that time. Just like before, 
participants can unmute themselves as necessary if you've allowed that feature to be turned on. And you've single-handedly gotten rid of all of the noise that was causing some issue. Unless, of course, it's the speaker, in which case you'll know immediately if that was the cause. Now, sharing screens is often a really important part of a Zoom meeting. We share PowerPoints, we share browsers, we share different things we want everybody to see. But there is a way to manage this. And there's also some security reasons why you may disable this. If you want people to be able to share their screens, then make sure that feature is turned on. Under security, you can toggle allow participants to share screen. This will make sure that that ability is turned on. However, sharing screens does have its own challenges. In Zoom, when you share a screen, you've now limited the ability of the gallery view to share everybody's image. Fewer images show. You'll typically see six, but you won't see necessarily all of them unless you're in a multi-monitor situation. So what I encourage you to do as the host is only share your screen when it's really important. I've been to meetings where somebody's just sharing the agenda and what happens is the agenda takes up a lot of the real estate. We don't really get to interact with each other. What I would encourage you to do is yeah, pop the agenda up at the beginning, then turn that screen share off and send the agenda to everybody. You could send the agenda as a PDF or a link to everybody prior to the meeting or in chat, you could send the agenda as a link. This way that person has the agenda independent of the Zoom meeting and you're using the Zoom real estate for everybody's face. Now, if you do have participants that have a speaking part in your meeting and they do need to share a screen, encourage them before the meeting to let you know they're going to need to do a screen share. That way you have all the settings right in place for them. Managing online meetings is no different than face-to-face -face meetings in that you have time management and people management and you have to keep things flowing. The challenges that these types of meetings bring are with the technology and ensuring that you're doing the right thing so that everybody has a great meeting experience and everybody is engaged throughout it. I would encourage you to watch this video maybe more than once and learn how to make the best of your meetings. I would also encourage you to do test meetings. For example, you can set up a meeting on your desktop using the free version of Zoom and then you could take your phone and connect to that as a different user. Now you have two different users on it and you can try out all these different settings I just mentioned. This way you become more accustomed to using Zoom and tools like this prior to actually being on the spot. I certainly hope this video is helpful. I wish you the most in your online meetings and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And I know I mentioned it before, but heck, give me a like. Give me a comment. Let me know what you liked about this. Let me know the experiences you've had that maybe I didn't mention. And if you feel up to it, subscribe and hit the bell. Have a great day.